Today's video is going to be an update on Heidi Broussard and her missing baby, Margot. Before we get into this video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is only to report on the news, very, very public news. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in the grocery store, in your home, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. morning my lovelies my beauties my friends my name is Christina and welcome to my channel if you're new here thank you so much for clicking on this video I really hope that you will subscribe stick around take a chance on hearing some things that I have to say and if you are a returning subscriber y'all already know y'all are my babies so good morning good morning good morning how is everybody doing today I hope you all are having an amazing day Christmas is coming up. I hope everybody's spending time with their families, holding your families a little bit tighter this year and loving them. Now listen, this whole case has got me so upset. I'm gonna just be honest with you guys, if I seem a little off, there is a bunch of reasons why. First of all, what we're gonna be talking about today is absolutely devastating, scary, and I just don't even know how to talk about it, to be honest with you. When I put out my video last Friday about Heidi Broussard being missing and her, you know, baby daddy, her boyfriend, fiance, I'm not quite sure exactly, you know, what his relation is other than they have a child together and they're together. Um, and talking about his interviews with the media. About as soon as I put that video up, I started getting flooded with comments and DMs and everything that they think that they had found Heidi. It was literally like a tsunami hitting, you know, me. This is, and first of all, this is not about me. This is just me telling you guys my perspective. It's awful. So before we get into all of those details, let me just give you guys a rundown of exactly what happened so I can catch you up. On Thursday, December 12th of 2019, Heidi and her daughter, Margot Carey, who was born on November 26th, were last seen around 8 a.m., okay? Heidi dropped off her son Silas at school and was seen at school at 7.50 a.m. She went to the book fair. She called her boyfriend Shane on the way home around 8, 8.15 and, you know, told him that she had a good time at the book fair. She bought all these books and da-da-da-da and everything was great. He went back to work. Heidi went on about her day. Her boyfriend Shane Carey got off of work around one o'clock. He drove home. He got home around two o'clock and she wasn't there. Heidi was missing and so was the baby Margot. He didn't think too much of it. He figured maybe she was at a friend's house and in another, they lived in an apartment complex. Maybe she's over at her friend's, hanging out, chilling, whatever. Well, he got a call from the school that their son, their six-year-old son Silas had not been picked up yet. So of course he thinks that's weird. He's trying to call Heidi, her phone is off. So he's thinking, okay, maybe your phone's dead, you know, whatever. He goes and picks up his son. He eventually later on calls his father and says, hey, she's missing, can't get a hold of her. Should I be worried? Shane's dad said, don't worry too much about it right now. She's probably at her friend's house. Around 7, 7.30 that evening, Shane calls the cops and reports her as a missing person. Nowhere to be found still. He noticed that her car was at the apartment complex. Her keys were missing, her cell phone was missing, but her purse and the diaper bag was there. Typically moms do not leave, especially with a newborn. The baby was like two to three weeks old. They don't leave the house without their diaper bag. But you know, us as you know humans, we're trying to rationalize everything. Okay, maybe she's out of friends. Maybe she just took some diapers with her and, and some wipes, you know. Maybe her phone is dead, you know, and that's what he was doing. When Shane started reporting to the media and doing interviews, he's obviously not a media personality, right? He was very nervous, you know, stepping back and forth, worried about the lights being in his eyes, worried about angles and all these different things that made him look to the public like a suspect. A lot of videos were made, a lot of people were saying that they thought that he was the next Chris Watts, that he had done something with his girlfriend and his daughter. A lot of rumors were going around, um, domestic violence rumors, a lot of different things and, 
that just ended up not being the case. The FBI got involved as well as the cops doing an investigation. The cops were very, very tight lipped. They weren't saying much. They were doing interviews and saying that they really didn't have a suspect and all this out there and the other. And the public was kind of demanding like, hey, are you checking this? Are you doing that? You know, all of us, we are investigators from our living room. I know I think I am. I'm like, wait a minute, did you do this? Did you do that? <laughs> so they, a lot of people were questioning, did they check the cameras in the apartment complex? Did they check their cameras in the surrounding businesses? Like, come on, like look for something. Where is she? But the cops were not saying anything. On December 19th, a week after Heidi went missing, the cops busted into her best friend of 20 years home to search her home. Inside the home, they found a little baby, about two or three weeks old. The baby seemed to be in good health. They continued to search. Megan told the cops, as far as we know, that that was her baby. But as they continued to search, they checked in her best friend's trunk of her car and found a body of a woman that they do believe to be Heidi Broussard's. Now, the body has been sent off to autopsy to make sure, you know, they have to do blood tests and all of that stuff to make sure it was her body for sure. And the baby, unfortunately, has been put into foster care until the DNA results can come back. If that is Shane's baby, if that is Heidi's baby, and this, that, and whatnot. Now, this case is really crazy because the best friend, Megan, who has been arrested right now. As of right now, she's arrested on two counts of kidnapping and one count of tampering with a corpse, which I don't understand how they can charge her with kidnapping but cannot charge her with murder, but we'll get to that later. The thing about this is, is her best friend, Megan, was even in the delivery room with her when she delivered this baby. According to rumors of friends that are around, the both of them, Megan has been telling people that she was pregnant. Megan supposedly got pregnant right around the same time that Heidi did. And the weird thing is there's like online forums and registries and stuff like that where Megan actually had her due date the exact day as her best friend Heidi's. So the speculation is now that she was planning this from the beginning. She was pretending to be pregnant. She was telling people she was pregnant when she just popped up with this baby and friends and different people supposedly, allegedly, were asking Megan where she had her baby. She started telling people that she had it in a birthing center with a midwife. That way people couldn't trace, right? People, they, you know, in her mind, people couldn't trace that she did not really have this baby, allegedly. So the whole gist of what's going on right now is she had a best friend that she would have gotten in the car with. I mean, you gotta think about your best friend that you've known for years, how much you would probably trust them, how much you would want to hang out with them or talk to them on the phone or do things with them. And we don't really know what happened right now. All we know is that her best friend, Megan, ended up with a baby in her home with no reports of delivery of a baby and a dead body of a woman in her trunk. This this is crazy this is so crazy there's a lot of speculations going around too about like megan possibly getting into substances she has a mug shot from years ago where people are saying that know her that her eyes look very alert maybe she was getting into things i have seen different interviews there is a channel i want to give a shout out to a channel j for justice they are a smaller channel but they do really good they have long, long interviews so if you like to hear people talk in interviews and stuff like that definitely check them out i'll leave them linked down below really good friend of mine sent me their channel and i've been listening to some of them their interviews whenever i can but they interviewed one of Megan, the girl who is right now accused or supposedly took her best friend's baby. A friend of Megan said that years ago when they used to work together that they saw Megan getting into substances. But I just don't, I can't understand how you can do, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that do substances. There's a lot of people that take stuff. They do illegal stuff. They take hard stuff, but they don't go around killing their best friend and stealing their baby. You know, there's also rumors going around that Megan's boyfriend that she lived with was going to kick her out. So she started pretending like she was pregnant and, you know, she was going to pop up with this baby in order to keep him. There are rumors going around that 
the actual boyfriend called CPS on Megan because she was mistreating the baby and that's how they busted in the house and found the baby and the body in the trunk. There's so many rumors going around because still the police department and the FBI are keeping very, very, very hush hush because it's an open investigation. And I think it's actually as much as we want to know what's what the real T is, what the real details are, they need to keep it hush hush because weird things like this. Have you guys heard about the the case, the Dipolato case, where the woman planned to kill her husband and you know she tried to set him up and it was actually an undercover cop and all this that there and whatever if you guys want me to do that let me know it's a it's a crazy story it happened here in florida but they had all of the evidence on her right they even had her on camera talking to an undercover cop but they were they she was found guilty sentenced to 20 years in prison but because of a technical mess up by the courts and, and the cops or whatever, allegedly, you know, whatever, that's what I'm getting from the case. They were able to overturn the case and they had to retrial. She had a mistrial and retrial. So when you have a situation like this, where there's literally a body found in the trunk of a car, like the cops need to be very careful. So there's no mistrial here. Like whoever did this, whoever did this for sure, because right now, you're innocent until proven guilty. Whoever did this for sure, there there needs to be justice for this. There is there are kids now that are not going to have their mother. You know there are family members, a mom, a dad that no longer will have their daughter. All for what? Because a best friend wanted what she had. And let me tell you guys something. Lord knows. I have been in some situations where I have really thought people were my friend and I loved them and I would have done anything for them. And they have tried to hurt me. And I know, like, I mean, thank God, and this isn't about me once again, thank God nobody has taken my life. But, you know, how, how do you watch out for this type of thing? How do we warn each other, right? You know, like, if you have a baby, you, you need to, to stay locked away in a bunker somewhere so your best friend doesn't hurt you and try to take your baby. I mean, what do you do? How do you protect yourself from these types of things? You know, this is so scary. I remember when she went missing, when Heidi went missing, and I was thinking, okay, is this human trafficking? What What is going on here? And I remember calling my very good friend who's pregnant, I have a couple friends that are pregnant, and saying, girl, like you don't leave your house like this is scary you have small kids like you know is somebody you know but how do you protect yourself from your best friend how do you do that especially somebody like heidi who says or the rumor is she was best friends with this girl for 20 years well sometimes it's your best friend for years and years and years that'll do like that's just Oh my gosh, you guys. I mean, it's heartbreaking. I will definitely be following this case, following the trial and everything. If you guys, you know, I, I'm going to, if you guys want me to make videos on it and keep you guys up to date and let you guys know my opinions, I will. Supposedly with the internet rumors and things that are going around, more charges are expected to come to Megan. And, and like I said, I don't really understand right now why she wasn't charged with murder and she was only charged with the two counts of kidnapping and the, the tampering with the corpse. But maybe it's because it all happened on the weekend. I don't really know, but you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good thing that they're, the cops and the FBI are staying tight lipped about this. That way they don't risk a mistrial or anything like that. You know what I mean? Another thing that I want to say is there is this investigator dude. He's not actually with the police department. He's not actually with the FBI. From what I understand, something happened to his daughter. He's an older gentleman. Something happened to his daughter years ago. And so now he runs a nonprofit organization where if there's a missing person or something like that, he channels his energy now because after his daughter, something happened to his daughter, he started drinking a lot. And so he decided to channel his energy now into helping other people that are in the same situation that he was in with his daughter. And so he's an he's an his own investigator with a nonprofit. He's not legally affiliated with the cops or the FBI, but they do kind of, you know, communicate. And he talked to Megan on the phone for 45 minutes. He said even he was shocked 
when he found out that there was a body in her trunk and a baby in her home that she allegedly did not have. He said that Megan seemed so concerned. She was very, very, very believable and empathetic and seemed concerned about her friend. And he said he actually had to get off of the phone with her because he was getting another call. She didn't want to hang up. And that she said, can I please call you if I think of anything else? And the investigator said, yes, yeah, sure. Please call me. You know, he said, he said he would have never in a million years thought it was her. And it's just like, you know, you guys, like, this was her best friend. Allegedly. We don't know for sure yet. But allegedly, this was her best friend. Oh, my gosh, you guys. So before I go, I'm going to read you guys a statement that Heidi's mom put on social media. So I want you guys to hear what Heidi's mom had to say. The family is overwhelmed with grief. We are getting through as a family. We are blessed with having many of Heidi's friends to help in Austin and Lake Charles community have been wonderful with their support and kindness and we're very grateful to them. Tammy Bruchard said that with Christmas coming up, their focus is on spending time with Heidi Bruchard's six-year-old son who has now lost his mother. She was very loved and we want to do this as a family with his father Shane and grandfather Ty and all of the others who loved Heidi, she said. Oh my gosh, you guys, how, how do you even tell your six-year-old child that, you know? How do you, you know, this woman, like I said, was around them. She was around the family. She was around this little boy. She was in the room when Heidi gave birth to this baby. In the room, allegedly, from what I'm seeing on the internet. How, you know, <sighs> all right, you guys, so that is the update. It's so devastating. I will keep you guys posted. I do want to say Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas to everybody out there. I really hope once again, like I said in the beginning of this video, that you guys will hug your family a little bit tighter this year. Love on them. Try not to stress about stuff. Try to just enjoy the moments. I know sometimes it's easier said than done, but if you're watching this, you're alive and breathing and you have a lot to be grateful for. So Merry Christmas. I will see you guys after the holidays. I love you guys so, so, so very much. Please do not forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.